Now let's further enrich our perspectives with our guest contributors who will give us their views and expertise on nearly everything we've covered on the program today. And for this, I'm joined now in the studio by a Rise News analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, Mahmoud Jagger, and by the public policy analyst, Chibuzo Okereke. Gentlemen, thank you and for coming to the program. Thank you. Good evening, Nigerians. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Second day of protest. <laughs> Let me start with you, Mr. Jagger. What's your assessment so far? Well, uh, honestly, personally, I thought uh, it turned out to be more effective than I initially thought okay. it would be. Uh, for many reasons, because, you know, the leadership of the protest was unknown. Uh, we, we, we hardly know who the leaders are, you know, it's just on social media that you see uh, various things. And then all the powerful establishment figures in the country, the presidency, the National Assembly, uh, governors, clerics, uh, traditional rulers, even the media, everybody is saying don't do this. But it turned out that the motivation for the protest was so powerful because of the dire socio-economic uh, situation in the country. And uh, we could all see the danger because to have a widespread protest like that with an unidentifiable leadership, you see, promises chaos, even in the best of circumstances. If you call a demonstration in this country, the chances are very high that uh, it will be hijacked and uh, violence uh, with looting and everything, not to mention this one. So uh, security agencies, government, they did everything to stop or disorganize it. But in the end, uh, it went on and assumed uh, violent dimensions in several states with curfews and uh, everything, death, destruction, looting. So it's the second day. They promised to do it for 10 days. I hope they will not do it for another <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> Let us hope it will right. fizzle out soon. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Kareke, um, second day again. What has been the most significant part of this protest in your view? Well, uh, first I would say is uh, the sudden realization uh, by government that they are actually holding brief for the people. Uh, because uh, the character of our governance system is such that if you are in government, uh, the governed, uh, you, you distance yourself from the governed. So the protests may have reawakened uh, already known uh, consciousness that as government we are responsible and supposed to be accountable to the people. And indeed, the people, you know, has been patient for a long time. And I have to say that what is going on now is actually uh, uh, the accumulation of the patience bank the people have been able to hold over time. Because you remember in the previous administration, the petrol price was uh, increased mm -hmm. in multiples of two or three times. And it seems the people were showing understanding. And the former president couldn't remove uh, the subsidy. Uh, in fact, the last budget he made, he put the so he didn't provide for subsidy till around uh, uh, June. So, but when this president come, you know, full with energy and in his own uh, 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 his, his own statement, he was possessed with courage uh, to remove uh, a subsidy, and that has generated to what you know we are seeing now. So, I think there's an uh, an awakening by government itself that. They have been, uh, we have been in a state of state exit. And state exit is a state where citizens are responsible for themselves. They provide almost everything for themselves. They total distrust of government. They don't believe in government. And if they rise, realizing their power under Section 14 uh, to be that sovereignty belongs to the people and that through that sovereignty and the constitution is where government derives uh, its power. So once the government is aware, or indeed politicians, that people have realized these people in government are representing us, you can see the level of G3 it has created. So I believe strongly that we may have some uh, changes going forward. 
Okay, Mr. Jacob, we have a government in power that won with just over 30% of the votes. You can describe that arguably as a minority government. Do you think this government has done enough to rally the nation? Because it seems also like they need help. Well, the, 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 the problem at hand now uh, is not the percentage of votes that they got, because uh, rightly or wrongly, that is our own uh, uh, electoral uh, arrangement. You can see, I mean, for example, in the United States, you can win an election with, even though your opponent has more votes than you have got, uh, which, which sounds queer to us. Now here, we have always had a relatively minority government, because uh, even in the Second Republic, Shagali was elected with about 36 uh, percent of the votes. Now that happens when you have uh, many candidates. Candidates, uh -huh. yes. In 1979 we had five, uh, last year we had 18. So it's almost inevitable that somebody with less than a majority votes will win the election, provided he also had the, the, the spread uh, in the states. But that is not what brought the problem, because uh, Nigerians accepted that, okay, that is our electoral arrangement and somebody has satisfied that and has been declared winner and the courts have upheld that. It is the socio-economic choices that were made. Of course, uh, we are still arguing that uh, most of the problems were inherited, but probably they were also compounded uh, by some of the policy choices like our colleagues uh, that you spoke to earlier were saying, two in particular, the complete removal of fuel subsidy, even though uh, a large part of it has been surreptitiously sort of reintroduced and most seriously, the flotation of the of the of, of the, the naira. Naira. Uh -huh. Now those two came together and impacted everything, and the wages became minuscule, and the price of food, medicine, transport, everything went up within such a short period uh, of uh, time, and it really created a combustible situation. And uh, we must say that the leadership acted slowly, maybe they didn't appreciate the level of the anger, or maybe they thought uh, the talk by traditional rulers and clerics and others may be able to dampen, uh, but the anger was really so much and so deep-seated uh, that uh, it led to this explosion that we have had. But uh, it is not too late, even now, only that uh, it calls for serious, serious rethinking right. in Nigeria of the relationship between the leaders and the citizens, and in particular, the park sites and the, 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 the resources that go to maintain the, the, the leadership uh, elite vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the people. It needs serious thinking, because the things that give the, the, the leadership a bad name, some of the projects of the presidency and the salaries and wages of the National Assembly okay. and then all this talk about jets and things like mm. that. It really... It, it doesn't help the government. It <laughs> doesn't so, help at all. Mr. Kareke, he has talked about leadership. But, you know, in Nigeria, there are different types of leadership. In the business sectors, leaders are doing mm. pretty well. In so mm. many other sectors, our problem seems to be political leadership. Mm -hmm. Today, how would you describe the political leadership and how do we get out of this? Because that seems to be the fundamental <coughs> issue that we have. Okay, so uh, it's, it's our leadership philosophy and uh, the underpinning uh, values that you build around your leadership. Also, it's about po uh, po uh, popular participation and then political literacy. If you look at the voter turnout uh, we have recorded, it's too abysmal. And that is uh, a lot of people, when you ask them, they tell you our vote don't count, the government doesn't work for us. But that is not the design of statehood. In statecraft, as a constitution, I've stated sovereignty belongs to the people. So if we don't police the gateway to political leadership recruitment, we will not get there. So you need to have all the agency for social political mobilization, political parties, civil society, youth organization, women active, and then the electoral umpire itself, you know, functioning for the good of the people. Because whoever 
you elect into public office, you have donated your powers, your rights and privileges to the person to manage your political economy. Interestingly, the preamble of our constitution says the reason we are creating this constitution is to promote good government. Section 4 says the National Assembly will make law for the order and good government of the country. Section 16 says the government shall manage our national economy to, for the maximum security of the welfare, freedom, or, and the happiness. In, can you imagine that? That our government is supposed to create happiness for the people, and the people are saying they are not happy. So I think it's our political leadership character. But also we have to realize in terms of political literacy, how our government is structured. It is not only federal government that we have in Nigeria. Mm. And that always is a shock to me, that we can be protesting against bad government and we will think that it is about federal government. Yes, federal government did the subsidy policy, the uh, unification of the Naira and all that. However, although they didn't create a trust fund like what we had in the Shopee to intervene, they decided where I think they got it wrong is to use political patronage channel to distribute palliatives. We were just watching that good advert that an individual could distribute rice down to the villages in many places, but the government, the rice, the, the, the rice the federal government gave to state, we are not able to see the people they delivered it to. And just recently, under the Nigerian Care Project, the COVID-19 reform, more than 500 billion was distributed to about 34, you know, states. So, and since last year, when this government came to power till now, no state government, no local government uh, revenue or uh, allocation rather is being withheld. Right. So government must be accountable at all levels. Uh, Mr. Jaga, when you look at most of the newspaper headlines today, they speak of um, the economic losses due to activities grinding to a halt in all states in Nigeria. Uh, so a lot of the business people will say we better hurry up, you know, because so that we don't keep losing millions of uh, naira. Mm -hmm. However, others will say that there is no gain without pain. <laughs> How would you respond to that? There is no doubt that uh, even the general strikes that we used to have, which were called by labor leaders, entailed the huge losses. Uh, not even strikes. I mean, even public holidays. There was a time we had uh, four days of public holiday in one week. And uh, some economists said the economy lost 1.7 trillion uh, naira uh, that week alone. Not to talk of this kind of protest which uh, everybody was running and hiding at all. At least no abiding people. Then others were on the streets, uh, in some places, ransacking shops. So the losses are huge. But we console ourselves by saying... If that leads to an enduring solution and improves perception and communication between the leadership and the citizens and possibly also results in the modification of some policies that will address the most immediate grievances of the citizens, then probably it is worth it. And the losses that we made uh, over the last uh, two days uh, we can recoup uh, if we are uh, alive and healthy. Mm. So how can we ensure that, talking about recouping how should, can, or, and change, mm. how can we ensure that there is a sort of momentum after the protest has ended? It was supposed to be for 10 days. You don't want the government to go back to business as usual. What must citizens do? So Other that, ways that, to that, continue that, that to engage. The, the need for the role of the civil society and also for a structure, the protest. And uh, that is why people like me believe, I have done uh, so many policy reform protests in this country, and I believe there is nothing wrong in uh, staying in a particular place to do your, the protest. Because one of the things it will give is to be able to articulate and aggregate the, uh, the demand, the charter of demand and the timeline and different people will be able to communicate to the media and the government that this is so the civil society will need yes bad governance is older than uh, answers Go bad governance has been with us for many years and that is why somebody could through the social media mobilize the whole state in the federation to go out you know on the street for this so 
The civil society will need to come in to midwife the process. I also encourage government from the FCT to begin to organize uh, a policy reform and youth engagement uh, uh, town halls across. The president himself, he may have been busy over time, but I, I can't reckon how he has moved out of FCT to engage regions and states. They, so that collaboration, we may need to have that time because I believe that you, you, when you're governing people, it's important their most priority need is what is being addressed and not what you think is best for them. This is very critical. So we may, we, you, may, you may think that this 500 kilometer road is important for people. When you go to that community, 70% of them are using a, a bicycle, right? Only 30% are. So there will be a mismatch in the political economy gain of such policies. So the civil society should engage. And the demands that have been made must be concrete and measurable. The demand don't need to be ambiguous. Don't say they will understand because we need to also channel the demand in terms of what the federal government should do, state and local. Right. And it's also important to support the president on the issue of local government autonomy. Because when governance are collapsed at the local government, we cannot achieve development. Then the issue of state police. Okay. So we don't get to sacrifice those two important major policy reform on the author of this. Yeah. Mr. Chibu Zekareke, Mr. Mahmoud Jaga, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again next week from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. <laughs>